Just 1,500 light years from Earth, a black hole tugs on a red giant star. And this force has been registered by astronomers at NASA. This newfound black hole, dubbed the unicorn, seems to be the closest black hole to Earth. And, thank the heavens, it seems to be the smallest black hole ever found. Although it seems to be the celestial entity to solve an enduring mystery in astrophysics, a black hole this close to Earth is absolutely terrifying. So, are we safe? Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. Small black holes. How many are there? For decades, astronomers have been looking for the signs to figure out how many black holes are actually in our corner of the universe. And in the struggle of gaining information, they've been constantly seeking answers as to how small a black hole can actually be. But the reality is anything, if you compress it enough, becomes a black hole. If you take an orange and you squash an orange down sufficiently small, according to Einstein, it becomes a black hole. Astronomers have found plenty of big and medium-sized black holes over the years, including a supermassive monster at the heart of our galaxy. But until recently, they've been no signs of smaller black holes. How does a black hole suddenly start off as a gigantic entity in the cosmos? Surely it has to start off smaller and grow bigger. And that's presented a long-standing mystery in astrophysics. But you take any mass, if the radius within which that mass sits is less than 2 gm over c squared, it is a black hole, period, end of story according to Einstein. Now, witty astronomers at NASA have discovered a black hole with just three times the mass of the sun. This effectively makes it one of the smallest black holes ever found to this day, and it just so happens to be the closest known black hole to our green and blue marble, just on the distant outskirts about 1,500 light years away. And the latest discovery that I worked on uh, in January this year was the unicorn black hole. So. This is the closest black hole to the Earth. According to Thirindu Jaya Singh, an astronomer at Ohio State University and lead author of a new paper detailing the discovery in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, the discovery of this small black hole just 1,500 light years away implies that there are many more small black holes that should be found if astronomers expand their search and cover more volumes of space. According to astronomer Thirindu, who ironically has a name similar to a character from a Star Wars movie, the finding of this small black hole so close to Earth should definitely compel other astronomers to find more small black holes in our galaxy and elsewhere. So there's a gap between neutron stars and black holes, and we haven't found a lot of black holes in the mass gap yet but we are finding them more and more now. One of the great things about finding celestial bodies is that you can give it a proper name, aside from being forever remembered in the books of science history. As for Thirindu Jaya Singh and his colleagues, they've dubbed the object the unicorn, in part because it is unique, and in part because it was found in the constellation Monoceros, named by ancient astronomers after the Greek word for unicorn. By studying this unicorn and other objects like it, researchers hope to get a clearer picture of what happens to stars in the final moments of their lives and why some of them collapse to become black holes while other run out of fuel, collapse, and become dense stellar husks or neutron stars. They're not black holes, but they're still extraordinarily extreme objects. The gravity on the surface of a neutron star is still billions of times stronger than the gravity at the surface of the Earth. The search for the unseeable goes on. Remember that no light can escape from a black hole. Therefore, the only way of detecting them is through indirect methods. X-rays have been the main means of identifying black holes because most known black holes emit X-rays as they pull materials off orbiting companion stars. When the material, like a star, swirls around the black hole, it creates an accretion disk, and that disk emits radiation that can be detected via X-ray telescopes. And that's where Hawking proved that black holes are not completely black. He showed that black holes allow a certain amount of radiation to leak out of their surface, leak out of the event horizon. Oddly enough, the unicorn was found by a different meticulous and time-consuming method. There are a lot of black holes that we haven't found yet because they don't make X-rays, they don't make gravitational waves. We can't find them. Jaya Singh's team had to coordinate and use data from a number of observatories around the globe to measure periodic changes in the brightness and spectrum of light coming from a red giant star known as V723 Mon. 
it's very close 1500 uh, light years or 466 parsecs and it's a baby black hole again Actually, these types of observations have been used for several decades to search for exoplanets, and searching for an exoplanet is far more difficult than locating a star. Remember that even one million Earths could fit in our sun. You know, people have been using this method a long time to find exoplanets, other stars, but you can model the light curves. Through their observations, the team deduced that an unseen companion object is actually tugging at the red giant, distorting it into a raindrop shape. If you look at this plot, you can see the star being distorted into a different shape, not a circle, and that creates a signal, like a sine curve again. And the team believes that the companion is most likely a small black hole because the data given shows a combined mass of both objects. But could it simply be a neutron star? Well, to answer this question, the astronomers look to see if the star is heftier than the unseen object. Scientists are bewildered because although the unicorn is changing the shape of the red giant, it isn't pulling material off of it. That means there's no accretion disk and therefore no x-rays, which is why it went unnoticed until now. This lack of x-ray emissions in such a quiet black hole may account for why so few small ones have been found so far. They're simply not doing the massive damage that we've all seen in documentaries and sci-fi flicks. We're used to seeing black holes with more than five times as much mass as our sun. They are plentiful, but these small black holes are in very short supply. Now, astronomers refer to the puzzling lack of small black holes as the mass gap. The heaviest neutron star possible in the universe, the lightest black hole possible in the universe, and either there will be a gap, a desert between the two of them, or they'll be overlapped. Filling in the mass gap, the truth is surely out there. Of course, there have been other indicators of small black holes. When we look at neutron stars and black holes, they come in different sizes, um, uh, different masses. Before the unicorn's discovery, several other cases for black holes within the mass gap have been published. So the first detections that we saw a couple years ago and, and the, the three previous to this have all been really heavy. In 2019, the same team announced they'd found a dark object orbiting a giant star. Their findings showed that the object's mass was actually less precise as they were only able to conclude that it was either a black hole or an unexpectedly massive neutron star. When we see objects, like with this event, which are in the kind of one or two times the mass of the sun range, then our predisposition is to imagine that there are these objects called neutron stars. So the truth was still out there. Then there was a big find in 2020, casted by even more doubt as another team of astronomers found what they believed was a triple system just about 1100 light years from our planet. Indicators showed that this triple system contained a black hole of about four solar masses orbiting in the proximity of two stars. If the system really contains a black hole, it would be the closest known to Earth. Gravitational waves. For further paramount and super intriguing results, we use gravitational wave detectors. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, was able to detect a gravitational wave known as GW190814. In 2019, it was detected after the collision of two objects weighing about 2.6 solar masses. This indicated that it must have been either an extremely heavy neutron star or the lightest known black hole. And just two years prior to this gravitational wave detection, astronomers observed the merger of two neutron stars via gravitational wave, and that one is also believed to have created a black hole of about 2.8 solar masses. Unfortunately, objects detected via gravitational waves are extremely difficult to study in the long term because they usually exist far beyond our galaxy. This means that astronomers only learn about them when they emit a brief burst of gravitational waves. After that, they're out of sight, yet never out of mind. The unicorn, however, is in our galactic backyard, and it can be studied for years, which will make observational data more accurate and reliable. The collapse happens instantly. For further data, astronomers are betting that the unicorn and other similar objects will shed light on physics that governs the formation both of black holes and of neutron stars. Both objects form when a star reaches the end of its life, exhausting its nuclear fuel supply. But which fate awaits any individual star depends on its mass and some other factors. 
but it's it's still the dead skeleton of a star that's not strong enough, not compact enough to become one of these more exotic objects that we call black holes. If the star is slightly bigger than our sun, it blows up in a supernova explosion. Then the remainder of the star is compressed by gravity to form a neutron star. Neutron stars are so dense that massive material is packed together as tightly as an atomic nucleus. And normally, if the object is much heavier than our sun, then the object collapses further under the force of gravity, and this creates a black hole. The star may have actually lived for 10 million years, but the end game always plays out with incredible speed. Todd Johnson, an Ohio State University astronomer and co-author of the Unicorn paper, was quoted saying, In a span of one to five seconds, the star decides if it's going to explode as a supernova and produce a neutron star, or if it's going to collapse and form a black hole. Or there could be an intermediate case where it explodes a little bit, but still has material falling back producing a black hole. All of that gets decided in very short order. And although scientists would love to recreate these events in a lab, it's impossible to mimic the densities of certain stars. And so, to this day, astronomers don't fully understand how matter behaves at nuclear densities. But the unicorn and other small black holes could be the guide to help scientists understand this cosmic unknown. It will record and observe the southern part of the sky every night. And it will create about one petabyte of data every day. It is kind of crazy. As more and more data is released, a clearer picture may emerge. Currently, aside from NASA, the European Space Agency's Gaia spacecraft is already being commissioned to map the positions of stars in the sky with pinpoint precision. And astronomers believe it will detect more little black holes pulling on their companion stars. From observatories in Europe to North and South America, astronomers are in deep search for celestial objects to reveal the motion of stars as they respond to their unseen companions. More and more data will become available, allowing astronomers to learn whether there's simply a shortage of small black holes, or if small black holes are in fact scattered throughout the galaxy. It might seem cliche to say, but the truth is out there, and our knowledge of the truth grows every day.